Hey folks, uh, we're getting ready for a test um, uh, for our IM1 class for modules, I think it's 4, 5, and 6 on linear functions and equations. And, and don't forget all your lessons can be found right there at MrMathBlog.com. Let us let me go to that real quick. Here's MrMathBlog.com and then when you uh, look up here, there's all the classes. Your class is Integrated Math 1 if we click that right there. And then uh, scroll down. If you scroll down, you'll see your lessons. Um, uh, this lesson I'm going to be uploading right here. Okay, so um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Sometimes if I, let's see if I do something like this. Can you see that? Maybe a little paint can. Um, uh, anyways, here's the practice test I'm going to upload. And there's a review already there. Uh, if you need some more practice right there, that will get you ready for your upcoming test. All right, let's get started here. So, so these are questions that are just like your test. I made your test, and if you uh, go to our school, um, you're going to see questions just like this. So, anyways, a car can travel up to 215 miles per hour. It must be a race car. So, if the car travels continuously at the speed write an equation that gives the number of miles y that the car would travel in x hours well if it travels 250 miles per hour for x hours then in x hours it's going to be 250 times x so y will equal that 250 times x okay so let's complete the table and it says show all work so we're going to plug in x equal 1 2 3 4 and 5 right there okay so that's what this is right there okay so 250 times 1 that's easy enough I'm 215 215 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 okay now on your test it says show your work so we're going to be expecting you guys to show your work on that okay let's see if I do that yeah maybe we can see that a little bit better all right, I'm, I'm, sometimes I can't see my cursor in these videos. Anyways, so now we're going to graph these points and label them, okay? So we're going to go over 1, up 215. So over 1, okay, 215 is half of 30. So we'll put a point right there. So there's that point right there, okay? And it says label the point. So here's 1, 215. So let's go over 2, up 430. So over 2 up to 430 okay and it's going to be right there okay over 3 up 645 well this is going to be 645 because it's right in the middle right there so here's over 3 up 645 over 4 up 860 over 5 up 1075 okay you have one just like this it's just a different number on there okay I think it's 210 or 205 something like that I don't know so anyways Hey, would this graph be a continuous or discrete linear function? Okay, so so can can we do fractions of an hour? Can the can the car travel fractions of an hour? Yes, it could. So it would be continuous. So we would um, uh, connect that with a line right there. I'm surprised I didn't do that. So um, uh, it would be actually a line. Let's see if I can do that real quick, right up through here. Okay, so it could start at zero. Okay, and it would go zero miles. Okay, and then and then and there goes the line. It just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up. And so there would be our line right there. Y equals 215 times times x. Okay, all right. So state whether the uh, linear equations are in slope-intercept form, point-slope form, standard form, or neither. Okay, you're going to be required to know the difference between between those okay so slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b let me get a cursor on here point slope form is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1 okay and and x sub 1 y sub 1 are a known point and there's our good old slope right there standard form is ax plus by equals c so what is this guy right here it's hard to see it but can you see that zero right there so um, that's the same equation so that would be in slope intercept form okay this guy, this is my AX plus BY equals C, so this one is in standard form, okay? So is that one right there. Here's an example of point-slope form, Y minus a minus 5 equals my slope times X minus 7. So the known point would be 7, negative 5, and the slope would be negative 2 thirds. Here's an example, and there's many examples of neither, but there's an example of neither right there. And then these are all linear because these are all y to the first, x to the first. Okay, I don't see any cubes or squares on there. So 
uh, and there's no X's or Y's in the denominator of a fraction. So these are all linear right there. Okay, so find the slope of these lines. Okay, so the slope of these guys, we've got to use our slope formula. So it's this right there. Okay, so I'm going to let this be X1, Y1. This be X2, Y2. So when we uh, plug that in, we go um, Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. That's what this stuff says. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 2 minus 4, be careful, you guys. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Okay, so that will reduce to a negative 1 third. Never leave the, den um, uh, the negative in the denominator. That is tacky, okay? And 1 goes into 2, or I'm sorry, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 twice. We would expect you guys to be able to reduce that fraction, okay? All right, this is in point slope form. This is my slope right there. So negative 2 thirds is our slope right there. All right, this one's in standard form. The secret on this is this, you guys. If it's in standard form, then we do uh, opposite the number in front of X over the number in front of Y. So opposite 5, which is negative 5, over uh, negative 2. So negative 5 over negative 2 is positive 5 halves, okay? Um, some teachers will want you to solve for Y and put it in slope-intercept form. But this is the shortcut right there, opposite A over B, okay? All right, how about these guys? All right, when, they're, uh, when they give you a picture, it's easiest to do rise over run. So rise over run from the left point to the right point. So start here, it goes up how much, and then over how much, and that will be our slope. So our rise is 4, and our run is 1, so the slope is 4 over 1, or 4, okay? Right here, the rise goes down, so it's a negative, and we still go to the right. So, so the rise is negative 5, the run is 4, so the slope is negative 5 over 4, okay? You got a handful of those kind of questions, all right? Write this guy in slope-intercept form. Well, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So, um, so what we have to do is solve for this y right there. So let's get this 8x over here. So we're going to go plus 8x and then plus 8x right there on both sides. Okay, now we want the mx to come first. So I'm going to write the 8x first in the minus 12 second right there. Okay, then we've got to divide everything by 6 because we want 1y. We don't want 6y. So let's go ahead and divide everything by 6. Okay. So when we divide by 6, uh, whoops, this should be a plus right there. My bad. This should be a plus. Uh, I know what I'll do. I'll just get rid of it this way. Okay, so this should be a, a, a plus 8x. So I don't know what I was doing right there. So that should be a plus 8x. Okay, 2 goes into this uh, 4 times. 2 goes into this 3 times. So it's going to be uh, 4 thirds. And let me get rid of that so it'll be ready for my kiddos when they're ready. So it's going to be 4 thirds and then um, uh, 12 divided by 6 is 2. Okay, so y equals 4 thirds x plus 2. Okay, all right. I make mistakes all the time. Does your math teacher make mistakes? They do. They just don't admit it. Okay, I do all the time, every day. Okay, so write this guy in standard form. Okay, standard form is AX plus BY equals C. So let's first distribute this negative 5 through the parentheses right there, okay? So we get negative 5X minus 10. And then we got to have the X over here. So I'm going to go ahead and go plus 5X, and I'm going to do it right way over there on the left of the Y. So plus 5X over there. Okay, so we get that, and then we don't want that 2 there, so now we're going to go minus 2, minus 2, and that'll put us in standard form right there. Okay, so there we go, and then so negative 10 minus 2 is negative 12. You guys be careful, okay? All right, so a lot of you guys probably want to do 8 or negative 8, but negative 10 minus 2 is negative 12. Okay, let's graph these lines, okay? So when it's in, in um, slope-intercept form, we're going to first graph the y-intercept, which is at negative 4. So that's on the y-axis. We're going to go down here and put a put a point right down here at negative 4 right there, okay? And then that from there, we'll use this slope, 3 over 2, which just means go up 3 over 2, okay? Up 3 and to the right 2. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, to the right 2. We're going to put a point right there. 
and then uh, there it is right there and then connect them up and then we always write the equation next to the line you'll see why later um, it just kind of gives a name of that line right there because we're gonna in the next chapter I'm pretty sure in the next module we're gonna find out where they intersect we're gonna have two lines and we need to label which line is which okay all right so here you guys this is in um, point slope form our known point is Think of this as opposite, so negative 3, and opposite of this is 2, so negative 3, 2. So that means we're going to go to the left 3, up 2, and we're going to put the point right there, okay? So there's that, and then here's the slope. So the slope is negative 2 over 1, which means we're going to go down 2 to the right 1. So down 2 to the right 1, put another point right there, connect them up, and write the equation next to the line right there, okay? All right, how about this guy? Okay, so this guy, um, I like doing the intercept method. The intercept method is when we let um, uh, y be zero, I'm sorry, when we let x be zero, um, uh, and then solve for y right there, and then we go ahead and let uh, y be zero and solve for x. So check this out, you guys. When x equals zero, I'm going to cover up this because this is 0. 5x equals 0. It's gone. So how many times does negative 4 go into 16? It goes in there negative 4. So I'm going to graph 0, negative 4 right down here. Okay? And then the next part is we let y be 0. So we just cover that guy up. And then 5x goes into 16. How many times does 5 go into 16? 3 with 1 left over. So this is going to be 3 and a third. So we're going to have to guesstimate a little bit. So 3 and a third would be like right about there. Okay. Whoops, I did 2 and a third. I did the wrong one. Golly. So it would be this. And then we're going to write the equation at 3 and a third, not 2 and a third. Okay. And then uh, write the equation uh, next to that line right there. So here we go. Um, so something like this so there it's going up through those two points oops I missed it a little bit let's do this okay anyway so and then uh, of course write the equation next to the line okay so don't forget to do that okay so actually I'll do that right now all right let me go grab uh, okay so we're gonna write uh, 5x minus 4 y equals 16 because I made a mistake so I don't want to uh, show you that answer I'll have to show it to you because I'm going to keep going but so here it is so just write the equation next to that line right there okay just flip it down and there we go all right so okay so um so there it is okay so here we go so you have one just like this on your test you plan to spend thirty dollars on burgers that cost five dollars each and fries that cost three dollars each okay so i have more questions that go with this so if we buy one burger how many batches of fries can we buy okay all right, so if we buy one burger, one burger is five bucks, so we're first going to take the $30 that we have and subtract that five. So 30 minus five is going to get us that uh, 25. Okay, so now we, how many batches of fries can we get? Well, how many times does three go into 25? Okay, we get goes in there eight times, there's one left over, three times eight is 24. So how many batches of fries can we buy? We can buy at most eight batches of fries, okay? All right, let X be the number of burgers that we buy and Y be the number of batches of fries that we buy. So write a linear equation that describes the problem. Okay, so the burgers cost $5 each, so this would be 5X, and this costs uh, $3 each, so this would be 3Y, and we have 30 bucks. So there's our equation, 5X plus 3Y is 30. Okay, so let's take that equation. And then uh, let's graph that line below. Okay, so again, I'm going to let x be 0, solve for y, so 3 goes into 30 uh, 10 times. And look, here's the y-axis, and so this, this over here is going to be labeled uh, our, our fries right there, and our x-intercept down here is going to be our burgers right there, okay? So if we do the intercepts and we solve, so here's the number of fries and the number of burgers, so um, 5 goes into 30 six times, so if we didn't buy any fries, we can buy six burgers, okay? And then if we don't buy any um, burgers, how many fries can we get? How many times does 3 go in there? So we can get uh, 10, so it goes right up there. There's our line right there. And what do you think, you guys? Do you, um, uh, use your graph to approximate how many burgers you can buy if you bought six batches of fries. Okay, so now that we have our line and we use the straight edge, because if you don't use the straight edge, you're going to have to fudge it a little bit. All right, and we're going to, so here is six, um, uh, 
let's see how many so uh, whoops six burgers so let me see if we bought six batches of fries so here's my number of fries so let's go ahead and draw a line straight over right there so uh, and then go straight down and so right there we can buy about two batches of fries my graph was off just a little bit so we can just guesstimate we can buy two batches of fries it's just a little bit over two okay all right uh, would this function be considered uh, continuous or discrete and explain? Okay, well, can we buy uh, half a burger or half a fries? No, we can't. So it's going to be a discrete because we can't buy half a burger or half a fries. Okay, so that one would be a discrete. It would be just points. But, but what we did is we graphed the line so we can answer questions like this right there. But it would actually just be a bunch of points right there. Okay, all right, you guys. I hope you do great on your test. Take care.